not long to go now until you make your professional debut. First of all, how are you feeling? Yeah, feeling really good now. I'm uh, like everything's getting ticked off uh, each week. Like the weight's really good. I've uh, not got much to lose now. Like my sparring's going really well. I'm like, feeling fitter than I've ever been. So I'm just ready to get in there now, ready to go. What about you, Ricky? What? <laughs> I'm, I'm dreading it. <laughs> no, in fact, that, that's an absolute, that's an absolute lie. I, ca I can't, I can't wait. You know, I'm, I'm so excited. You know what I mean? He's, um, you know, the way he's, he's progressed and improved. He's a late starter. He started when he was 13, 14, but the way he's improved over the, the last few years has been absolutely phenomenal. And um, for me, as his dad, you know, it's, it's like, um, I haven't been born again. It's like the you know the the good times are, are, are back, and um, you know just seeing him how to how he, he progresses, how he's improving, how he, he takes out all the advice on board, and you know it, it's 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 a dream, and I really can't wait. Really can't wait. How did it start? Because I remember you many years ago when he was very little, saying, "I'm not sure if I want my boy to be a, be a fighter." No, absolutely. To be honest with you, and the the one thing is like. One thing I think Campbell needs credit for, he's going into the hardest game of all, and don't think, think, don't think bad of me for, for saying this, with, with what his, his dad did, you know, he deserves credit, you know, you know for, for that for that alone, you know, the, you know, the weight that's on his shoulders, but um, it, that doesn't bother me in the slightest neither, because, it, you know, if, if knowing Campbell like, like, like I know him, that's, it's like water off a duck's back, he relishes it, he can't wait, so that eases the, the pressure. You know, on, on me that uh, you know, there's a lot of expectation there, but he's just he's just rocking on with it, and um, yeah, it's brilliant, it's brilliant to see. I didn't want him to fight <laughs> when he was uh, when he was that young, but the minute he put a pair of gloves on, I thought, yeah, it's happening. This because he's he's like his dad. First time I got cracked on the nose, I thought, oh, that's nice, you know, and <laughs> and he's the same. And uh, from where he where he was a few years ago to where he is today, I think I speak for Matthew, and I think the whole family he couldn't be prouder. What was it that made you want to get, get into it then? Was it just your, your dad's reputation and the, and the history of the family? It's just something that like, I've always been around like the boxing gyms, even before I wanted to do it myself. So <coughs> there was always like a, like a bit of an interest. And then my dad had his comeback fight, like which was the first fight he had where I was old enough to really know what was going on. So that's what like sparked me interest in it. And then... I convinced my mum to let me go to an amateur gym, and then <laughs> as soon as I first stepped foot in, like in the gym, I just uh, I just loved it ever since, and I've, uh, like, now we're here. But I understand from a fairly early uh, pad session that uh, you'd had let you know just how tough it was going to be. Yeah, we had a spa. Um, I must have only been about fourteen or something like that. And I, I threw you a right hand. You was older than that, wouldn't you? Know? No, no, you're mm -hmm. just a bully, aren't you? <laughs> Like I threw a right hand and uh, it must have just been like a bit of like just instinct because he's got out of the way and then sunk a left hook in the body and only person to ever drop me still. <laughs> Did you do that on purpose? Pardon? Did you do it on no, purpose? it's just like he said, just uh, like a matter of instinct. But as soon as I did it, I thought, oh, I hope his man don't find out, you know. So it, uh, but, you know, there was a very similar thing when I was just coming through. I, I was sparring with Pat Barrett at the Collier's and Moston gym when I was a youngster. And I was putting it on Pat, and then Pat just instantly hit me with a left up to the body, and I, I never felt pain like it. That's where my body punching come from. And it, you know, you know, you know, it's not a tickling contest. This boxing game, you know, you've got to you've got to go through stuff like that. You know, it, you know, it the first time it happened to him, and it, it won't be the last. You know, but that's the it's just the, the game you, you game you're in, yeah. But how did you come back from that? Because that's the mark of, of somebody who wants it, isn't it? If you if you if you somebody who's going to get into boxing, you've got to know how to deal with, with getting hurt. Yeah, it's, it's a weird one, boxing, because to someone who's not a boxing person, like, they just think getting, like, getting punched isn't nice. Like, it, it weren't nice. Like, thanks for that. But, <laughs> uh, like, you do, like, you do get a bit of a buzz off it. Like, like there's a bit of a rush, you know, when you, when you get it. And like there is, there is no feeling like it, like the excitement you get. So I did, I've loved it ever since. Like, it didn't I, knew his at I knew his attitude was, was right when he turned around and said, can we spar again Friday? I thought, this little fellow wants to do me here. <laughs> can we so spar what? again Friday? So, you know, I didn't, didn't, you know, didn't soak or anything. Oh, back it, back at it again. And that's the way it's got to be. Was it pretty instant for you then? You, you knew that at that point that you wanted to be a fighter? Yeah, it was, as soon as like, I, uh, like, I started, because I'd always done bits on the bags like from being really young 
But the second they like walked into an amateur gym and like like took in the atmosphere and everything, like I just loved it. I just took to it straight away. So um, like it's literally from like day one really that I knew I wanted to like do it as a career and do it like properly. So how did it go for you as an amateur? Yeah, it was um, it was like a mixed mixture really in the amateurs. Like I, I, had, I won like the majority of my fights. I think I had about thirty odd, one twenty odd. So I, I didn't do bad. Picked up a national novice title, couple of northwest box, boxed a lot of good kids. So I did like I did. I've had like some good amateur experience. I've not had like fifty, sixty amateur fights. Like loads of experience. Like you see some kids have, but I have got like a pretty. That pretty solid amateur like backing behind me, so uh, I think it's going to like the quality of opponents a box will put me in good stead. What did you make of, of what you saw when he was uh, making his early start to his boxing career? Um, yeah, you, you you could see from the, the start, you know, he had uh, he, he had he had the talent, you know, making a few mistakes here and there, but that's not the, just the case for Campbell. That's for all of us when you you know when you when you first get going. But then he he started improving at. Um, such a, a rapid rate, and I'll be honest with you, the the lads that um, he was fighting, it wasn't like you know lads with the same number of fights that he's had. The lads that beat him were like national champions and boxed internationally, and you know and you know he's he's had thirty fights, they've had like fifty and sixty, and that you know to be honest with you, you know it, you know if the if if the records were the other way around and he'd had sixty fights and his opponents would have had twenty, I'd expect him to 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 flatten them, but he, he was getting beat by that much each time, which. And I said to Campbell, I said, listen, it's not where you start this game, it's where you finish. As long as you take the, you know, the, the, the defeats on board and you improve from it, you know, and I said, I said, don't worry. I said, this is, this is, you know, this is your, this is your apprenticeship. You know what I mean? You know, take everything on board and learn it because it's, you know, it will stand you in good stead for the future. And, and that's what he's, that's what he's done. I mean, everyone that, the lads that have beat him have been far more experienced that him, you know, so, and he's only been getting beat by that much, so that, that can't be seen as a negative, that's a massive positive from our account. Do you think your style then will, will suit the pros more than it will suit <clears throat> the amateurs? Yeah, definitely, like, that was, like, one of the things, like, obviously not an excuse, but, um, like, I've never had that sort of amateur style, like, I've always liked to, like, I've had, like, got a high work rate, but I like to pick my shots and, like, work at grinding people down and, like, Things like that, and in the amateurs, like three rounds, you like it's not really that effective. Where, you know, like the body punching and things like that, like you can, like so a, lot, a lot of good amateurs can move around the ring for three rounds and take the body shots. But as the fights get longer, like the, the like the legs soon slow down. And, like you're not really getting that in the amateurs. So, like when when I get in there as a professional, like the the difference in it, like I've noticed in my spars. Um, now we're taking our time and we don't have to rush things. I'm a completely different fighter. Was it an easy decision to make then in terms of wanting to become a professional? Um, it weren't like a, a really easy decision because we wanted to make sure that we was in a position where I was experienced enough and <clears> I'd <throat> turn over and impress people. Like we all were, like I was always thinking I wouldn't have an amateur career where we're hanging around for long, just because my style was made for the like the pro game, but we needed like we needed that balance, like we needed the good with the experience behind me, and then we just got to a point where we thought right, we we've got like enough experience, and I'll be learning a lot in um, my my pro fights anyway, like and with my style, it was the it was the right thing to do. So obviously we remember how you used to fight uh, in the good old days, and we always used to love. Watching your style, it was always aggressive and come forward and a great body work and what have you. How similar or how different is Campbell? He's very similar, you know what I mean. And he's um, and he he was even more similar, you know, um, when he when he first kicked off in his amateurs, very aggressive, you know, come come forward and and he said to he said to me and Matthew, he said, you know what, he said I'll, I'll be a better pro than I'm an amateur, you know. When do you think I can go pro? And we just said, not yet. <laughs> you know, you've not quite got a few fundamentals, you know, like the, like the jab and keeping your head open, everything like that. And what I'm able to pass on through my experience, I was a little, very, very aggressive in my early early career. And if you remember, I used to get cut for fun, you know what I mean? And that was because I was too, a little bit too gun ho a little bit too aggressive. And that's what I tried to, 
you know, to, to say, I want you to be aggressive, I like your body style, I like your body attacks, I like your aggressiveness and that, but it's got to be, you know, it's got to be polished up and tweaked a little bit here and there. And, and, I, and I used the same example in my career when I was a little bit too much bullet, bullet a gate, well, I kept getting caught. So that's what you've got to think about when you go pro, you take the head guard off, you've got to think about your attacks a little bit more. And he's, he's took it all on board. And like I say, way he's improved over the last few years and you know since he started working in the gym with Matthew and I'm, I'm miss myself in the gym he, he the, the difference from in in two years has been massive massive you know and uh, and it's it's that's the way it's got to continue just got to keep improving and working hard you feel like you're like a sponge if you like because when you consider the fact that you've got two guys in your corner who have been right through the, the top echelons of the whole sport to have that resource there to be teaching you that's an incredible position to be in, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Like there'd be uh, fighters out there that would kill for Joel the advice that I've got like, on my doorstep. So I'm, like, I'm in a really good position, and like you're saying there, like I, I am being like like a sponge at the minute. I'm learning all the time. I'm uh, like, I'm not learning every every week. I'm like learning every session and improving yeah, every session. You never stop uh, learning. You know, we're all still learning. Do you know what I mean? It's and that's yeah. That's so, it it's is. only. Um, like it's only gonna like things are only gonna get better as as we go on. But by the same token, the Hatton name carries so much history with it, so much legacy, particularly in these parts as well. Does that add a little bit of pressure on your shoulders at all? Yeah, definitely. It's um like something like we've always said is like when I'm fighting someone, they're always at their best because obviously they want a they want a Hatton name on their record. Like say to say they've beaten me. So, I I know I've got to be my best because my opponent's always going to be their best. So it brings out the best in me, like some um, something that drives me in the gym and like it's it just makes me work that little bit harder every session. Are you going to learn from some of his mistakes as well? Do you think? <laughs> Not just in terms of fighting. Not a great angle for you, that dad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's good. At least I'm not side on. But no, um, we, we all remember the lifestyle. Yeah. So well, we we have a little saying, don't we? You know, do as I do, do as I say, not as I do. And um, but to be honest, it's not like that. And to, and if I'm brutally honest, defending myself, well, I I only put weight on when I uh, when I got to championship level, where I'd have like three fights a year or something like that, where the gaps were bigger. When I was at his age, I barely put four or five pound on. But when he does get up to championship level, I don't want him. Ballooning up, do you know what I mean? Anything that, um, oh, that <laughs> mind, <sorry. laughs> it's the chippy That's in it, <laughs> Dom Dominoes. <laughs> <laughs> you no, absolutely, you know, don't want him, you know, doing that. You know what I mean? I mean, everybody turns around and says, you know, oh, what's he going to be like? Is he going to be like that? Does he have a beard? Does he have that? Of course, he has a beard. We'll have a, we'll have a beard with him, but I mean, he, he's he's nowhere near. Nowhere near what I was, thank God. But um, and that's that's the way that's the way it's got to be. And if I can, I've done a lot of good things in my career, you know, that I can pass on my knowledge to. And and the, the great position for me is I've done so many wrongs in me in my life. You know what I mean? Whatever he's got, whether it's from a boxing perspective or making way or a lifestyle or a relationship or anything like that, you know, I I've, I've got the answers because for me, good and good or bad, I've I've got a lifetime of ups and downs and so I mean it's it's whatever he's got going through his mind I mean it's very important that you know Matthew's his trainer and I'm his manager and it's not just what happens in the four walls of the boxing gym it's what happens when he leaves the gym he's got to be happy with his home life you know he's got to be happy and everything so it's it's the full picture and he's thankfully he's got a dad right on right or wrong that can you know pretty much give him the answers for anything anything he, any path he walks down what do you want to achieve from all this Campbell I mean is it just a case of Tony Pro, series, first few, uh, first few fights go, and then, and then take it from there on. Do you have ambitions to, to be as successful as, as your uncle? Or yeah, I um, like I do focus on like the short term a lot, but I do. Like, I don't see any reason why I couldn't go all the way myself. Like with my work ethic and like the people I've got around me, um, like, I do think I can get to the top. Uh, I think I've got the ability, but and the hard work to match it. Tell me about the nickname, Hurricane. Obviously, we've had the Hitman, and we've got Ma Magic Man as well. But, uh, but why, why Hurricane? I've got in my head that Matthew come up with it. I can't really remember it. Like it's been since I was like young um, that we've said it. But like it's the film Hurricane Carter, 
and I've just always liked the ring to be like Hurricane Hatton. So, um, so it's always stuck around. And just finally, um, I don't know if you remember your debut, I think it was, was it Kingsway Ledger Centre? In, in, in Witness, yeah, yeah, yeah. Things have changed a little bit. A little then. bit. I mean, we got the poster, on Robin Reed was top of the bill. <laughs> we got the poster there, and my name wasn't even on the poster. That's how big uh, big I was. But uh, no, and it's like, and I know we're, we're, we're getting old, aren't we? But oh my Lord, it only seems like yesterday I was, I was signing the papers to turn professional, and now the little whippersnappers here doing the same, and it's... It's massively, massively exciting, and all, all we turn on and say, just listen, give this game, you, you everything, you know, and, and you know, do um, fans like me because of me fighting, the way I was, my personality, my attitude, and everything, and he's exactly the same. So if you like, if you like me, you're gonna like my son, and get behind him. We don't know where the journey will end up. I've got a rough idea, but I tell you what, it won't be for the one to try and trust me.